What's up, everyone? I'm trying to stabilize this tripod here. Ugh, pain in the butt. Let's see here. There we go. Let's see if I can do this here. Hold on. Just extend this thing out a little bit. Hold on. There we go. Let's see if that works. What's up, Ryan? Ron, Tim, let's see here. This is Mark. Good to see everyone. Came on a little late tonight. Hey, Jeff. Um, my day's really good. Been good. Um, been working on my, uh, what's up, Mike, Kurt? I've been working on a video that I, my interview with Tim Pierce that I, uh, that I did who has a fantastic YouTube channel. Um, I'm sure you guys know Tim. What's up, Joel? Definitely a long time no, no, uh, no, no, uh, no see. Hey, Rick, <clears throat> excuse me, ooh. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeff. <coughs> that went down the wrong pipe, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, Chops, what's up? The Frampton News, um, I don't know, I don't know, um, I don't know how serious that disease is, it's, it's a disease, uh, I haven't looked it up, um, and I w need to ask my friend Peter, who's a doctor, who's on here. I don't know if it'll be on tonight, but Peter could answer this, how serious this is. Um, oh, man, let me tighten this thing up here. Um, I I don't think it's... Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's... Um, it's not like... Uh, I, the, the impression I get, I mean, this is not like ALS. Um, what's up, Martin? You know, my, my Aunt Penny that I've had on here, uh, she had, she's had MS for 50 years. And that's a muscle wasting, uh, you know, disease. And, um, and she can still play, uh, you know. My other channel, when will my next live stream be? Probably in a couple days. I'll put the Tim video out tomorrow. What's up, Ron? Um, so a couple things. Um, my buddy, uh, my buddy Dan that had surgery for his throat cancer. So I went to see him last week and he's doing well. There's a benefit concert for him tomorrow night uh, that I'm going to go to. Um, I'll probably announce it on my Instagram, just you know, for people to to go uh, to to come out, and if anybody's in town here or anything in Atlanta. Um, so, so there's that. You know, he's doing okay. He's doing okay, Ryan. Um, the surgery went well. He's back home. His voice he talks like this now, like a whisper, because he doesn't have any vocal cords, basically, or just has parts of his vocal cords. But he uh, hadn't spread, as far as they know. And um, I had a two-hour conversation with him, and it's just talking to somebody that's whispering at a loud level. You hear him, no problem. Um, all in all, I think it's that's a uh, that you, you know. What's up, Brett? Um, okay, so I've been thinking. I've been trying to think of the name of a guy for about 
20 years. So, when I was growing up, um, when I was in seventh grade, we had this thing, field day. Field day was a, uh, was when you got to come in and do whatever you wanted all day. And there's this guy, Dave Butler, that was sitting uh, under this tree and had about 20 people sitting around him and he was playing guitar. And he had a, I believe it was a Yamaha acoustic. And any song that anyone asked, and this is 1976 or so, any song anyone asked, um, he could play. Didn't matter. I mean, any popular song he could play and he, and he was saying, he didn't have a good voice or anything, but he could play songs. And, uh, you know, people ask him a Zeppelin song. People ask him what, whatever it was, you know, things that were out there at that time. And the, people were mesmerized. Now I was always play, already playing bass, you know, cello and bass in the school orchestra and things, and and um, I'm watching him. I'm thinking to myself, if Dave can play the guitar, well, I can certainly play the guitar. And uh, and I I went back home. My brother got this guitar um, from this place that he worked, Noms, it was called, some department store. One of the one of his buddies or something gave it to him. Paid him a dollar for it. It was this, hey Audrey. It was a um really cheap guitar. I don't even know what it was made out of. Particle board or something. I don't know. Well it had some bracing in it. But um so I had this guitar in a Mel Bay chord book and I thought if Dave can learn play the guitar, I can definitely learn how to play the guitar. So, um, so I, about a week later, we were just, it was, it was the end of school, right? So, um, what's up, Andre? I don't even know what kind of guitar. It was just a known, it was called a global, okay? Um, so it was the end of the school year and, uh, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, it was 76, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a great summer. I'm going to practice the guitar and learn how to play. Well, the next week, first week of summer, I was at this park, Potter Park, and I stepped in this hole, and my body twisted around, and I heard this crack, and I couldn't walk. I had a bike, and I remember I got on my bike, and I pedaled with one foot, so I pushed down and then I pulled pull the pedal back up and I was in so much pain and my my calf started to turn blue. And um and I get home, my mom said, What happened? And my ankle was just massively big, blown up like that. And um so she said, We gotta take you to the hospital. So you go to the hospital, have it x-rayed. It's broken really badly. So I get a cast on, um, and I had it on for 13 weeks. This was not a walking cast or anything. This was a very bad break. I, I must have torn my my calf muscle, my uh, Achilles tendon part. I don't know. I, it, it was so painful. Uh, so the entire summer... I mean, my foot was turned around backwards. Oh, God, it was it was like some Joe Montana stuff, right? Um, and I was stuck in a cast. And um, I had that chord book there. First week of summer. So there I am sitting there. So I open up Mel Bay, start looking at the pictures, and start... Uh, and start learning chords c g d a e and then um 
I thought, oh, this is pretty easy. Then I get to B minor. And uh, I'm like, ooh, this is kind of hard. This kind of hurts. So I have a cassette player there, and I'm hopping around everywhere, and uh, I put some songs on cassette that I wanted to learn. So I thought, I just listen to stuff and play what's on there. So I remember, so the first song I learned, I had a chord, I had a chord book for this, but never found the time. I talked about this last week. It's a song by America. And I love it because it starts on a G sus chord. So that was like the first chord in the first song I learned is G sus. So I start playing it and then I start learning other songs on America's record. That record with Sandman on it and Horse With No Name, all those songs, Tin Man. And, uh, oh, and I had just set the record. Okay, so in gym class, you guys saw my long jump on, uh, in the video, right, with jump. So when I was in eighth grade or seventh grade, we our track coach was our gym teacher. So he would always go and see what people were good at, what sports were good at. He uh, he would be uh, he would scout for the high school teams. Well, he was the high school track coach too, even though he was junior high uh, a gym teacher. So in gym class, we'd go out and we did we were doing track, and he went through the different things. He would see who was good in things. So I did the long jump. I didn't know how to do it. I did it, and I jumped further than the guys that were the seniors in high school. And I was in seventh grade. So uh, I jumped I jumped um, I jumped 23 feet. It was seventh or eighth grade. I can't remember now. Maybe it was eighth grade. 76, 14. Must have been summer of eighth grade. Um, so, yeah, it was summer of eighth grade. Uh, so I, I ran. So he got me to go out to run. That was that was it. So in seventh grade, he got me to run on the seventh and eighth grade track team. Um, so that's what it was. So I, I did. Um, I did like 21 feet in seventh grade. Then in eighth grade, I did 23 one. That video that I had from um, that was in the video where I did the, right before jump, that was, that was like about, tw that was 22 feet. So I never, um, I never jumped as far cause I broke my left foot. I couldn't jump as far, uh, even when I was a senior because of how badly I broke my, um, broke my ankle because my, my calf, after 13 weeks was, um, was the, uh, was the size of, there was just no muscle, totally atrophied. And, um, my, my coach was thinking, oh, I could go to the Olympics. Um, since I could jump 23 feet in eighth grade, he's thinking, oh, all I got to do is jump. If I get to 25 feet by high school, 26 feet, well, you're world class, you know, just those extra couple feet. You know, I was going to grow more and everything. And, and, uh, he thought, and I triple jumped, I could triple jump 46 feet. Then I think I triple jumped 43 feet in eighth grade. And then I did 46 feet. Um, so the world record was at the time was 29, two and a half Bob Beeman, who did it in 1968, which is still the second longest jump of all time from 1968. Then it was broken in 1991 by, um, by, uh, 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 Mike Powell. So, um, so I thought, oh, I could go to the Olympics. My coach was like, you go to the Olympics in the long and triple jump. But he's, he was thinking, okay, if you can jump 23, I jumped 23, one in eighth grade. So, He's thinking, okay, 24 feet the next year, 25 feet, 10th grade. You know, I just need to work on my speed because I could jump. And I had incredibly good vertical jump. I could jump. I mean, I'm not very tall. I'm five foot. I'm five eight. 
but I could jump and grab the rim when I was, um, what's up, Monty? When I was, in, I could stand under the rim and jump and grab the rim. So, um, so he's thinking, you know, um, that I'm going to go and I could be in the Olympics, maybe 1980. Um, that's really what I was thinking at the time. I was thinking, I mean, that was it. I was an athlete. So I, then I'm in this cast, um, after having this incredible year, won all these track meets and I, I was beating people by, by like five feet, six feet. Um, in the long jump, which is insane. You know, most of the kids were jump. you know, people that did well would jump 18 feet and I'd come in and jump 22, 23 feet. So, uh, um, so there I am totally depressed because I can't, I can't work out, you know, this whole thing that, that, uh, that I was gonna, you know, thinking I was going to do with my life, whatever, you know, you, you never know. Um, then, uh, so that's when I started practicing the guitar all the time because I didn't have anything else to do. And I was watching the 76 Olympics, that's right, every day and uh, of the, you know, when it was on for the two weeks and I was just practicing all, all the time. I mean, it's all I did all day was practice the guitar because uh, I didn't have a walking cast and it was a pain to walk around. So I'd sit there and get chord books and listen to, I had a little cassette player and I'd just learn songs off that. Um, so, so that's that. I mean, that, uh, stepping in a hole changed my whole life, right? Um, then we boycotted the eighties Olympics anyways. Exactly. George, that's great. That is hilarious. That is right. Talk about divine intervention there, right? That's pretty funny. We boycotted the 1980 Olympic Games in Moscow. The United States did. Jimmy Carter did. So, so had I been ready then, um, had I been ready, that would I would have, you know... Uh, that 76 was the year Bruce Jenner won the decathlon. That's correct. The music gods were looking out for me, Nick. That's there you go. Um, so funny how that, how that works. I remember when I went back to school, okay. In the fall, Dave, I hadn't seen all summer. And he said, uh, and I was limping. I got the cast off right at the end of the summer. The last week, literally the whole summer I was in a cast. So I got back and my leg looked really weird. Um, I mean, when I say my leg was this big, it was, um, uh, it was the size of my, of the bone that the, my calf had completely atrophied. It took, I limped for a year. I had to do all these different um, um, uh, physical therapy exercises. Uh, but it was probably two years till my till that leg was the same size as the other one. And, and when I jumped on it, I didn't have the snap off it and I didn't have the speed. It wasn't until I was in high school, until I was a senior again or junior that I was back to, to where I was as an eighth grader. It's pretty amazing. Now, had we, um, had, had we had, had it happened now, um, you know, they would have had, I would have had a walking cast. They would have done... They might have done surgery. Who knows what they would have done, but it wouldn't definitely would not have been as bad. I would imagine. I probably would have recovered faster, and um, and they wouldn't have let my leg get atrophied like that. Um, so, uh, um, so there you go. I was thinking about that. There's, a, but there was this other guy. 
So, oh, 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 but Dave Butler couldn't believe, and I have no arthritis in the leg, actually. No, it's my, it, no problem. My knees, it's amazing. From all the jumping I did, I have no problem with my knees at all. Um, so when I went back to school, when I went back to school, um, it looked weird though. People were saying, what happened to you? Because, um, cause I was limping really badly. Um, and, and I said, oh, I broke my ankle. I said, I just got out of a cast. I've been in a cast the entire summer. But I went and jammed with Dave Butler, and he couldn't believe it because I was just blown away by the end by that he had been playing for years. His dad was a, was a musician, and everything, and and he he couldn't believe all the stuff that I learned. And I said, "Hey, man, I was I practiced like ten hours a day. I couldn't do anything." <laughs> it was pretty funny. I I I've, have I ever told this story? I I think I might have told part of it, but. But, um, uh, oh, I, I, I actually threw up. This is how bad, how I knew that I broke my, um, Maurizio, what's up? This is how I knew I broke my ankle is that I actually got sick. I got sick to my stomach. Um, and my mom said, you must've broken something. Cause, cause I remember my brother broke his elbow. He had to have surgery on it a couple years before. And he got sick too. I think from the, um from the stress of the injury. I mean, it was obvious that I did something bad because it was, you know, my, my foot was mangled. Um, so, um, yeah. But had I not done that, what would have happened? I mean, this is what life is like. Had Rhett not come in and said, hey, you should start a YouTube channel um right it's it's uh it's crazy um oh man it was so swollen it was it was uh i mean i felt so nauseous immediately that um it, it was bad if Double K, if you didn't get injured, do you think you'd still have been a musician? I don't know. You know, um, I don't know. You know, people tend to do, uh, to, to go after things that they're naturally good at, I think. I think um, I was not playing guitar at the time of the injury. Um, no, I picked up the guitar because I was laid up. Well, I mean, I got the guitar, I got the chord book and I started on it after seeing Dave, but the field day was the last day of school. And this happened the first week of the summer. So we're talking about, um, reverse peristalsis <laughs> throwing up. That's funny. Um, um, it's funny though. I was uh, um, uh, when I knew I was good at something though, because I, I like I said, people tend to to want to excel at things they're good in. I think I was always if I was running a race, um, <laughs> double K. <laughs> um, when I was running a race, if I was ahead. I would run faster even. So I always wanted to be even that much further ahead because I was so competitive. And uh, uh, when I knew I was good in track, because I played basketball at the time, um, I played on the seventh and eighth grade basketball team in the, in the winter there. And I was really good. I started when I was in seventh grade. I was on a starting... I started on the seventh and eighth grade team, even though it was mostly, it was, I was the only seventh grader that started. Um, and I, cause I could really, um, cause I could jump so high. I mean, I could just jump over people. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, I could actually shoot a jump shot. Um, 
And, uh, um, but I, when I realized I was good in track, the coach said to me, you're better than anyone on the high school team. And I said, what? He said, oh my God. In gym class, I did better. I jumped for further than anybody jumped on the high school team that were seniors. He said, he said, this is unbelievable. He couldn't believe how, because I was fast too. I mean, I was a really good sprinter. And um, uh, I mean, I ran it. Well, we would run the 50 yard dash. I ran it in probably five, um, 5.4 seconds, something like that, 50. Really, really fast. Um, I was a guard. I played guard in basketball, but, but, um, um, but, you know, being able to, 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 but I could rebound and stuff because I could jump. I took giant steps. Um, and I played basketball every day. Um, I played basketball every day when I was a kid because we had a basketball court. So my, our backyard at, at my house had no grass. It was just dirt. <laughs> okay. Our back, backyard was probably 20 by 20 feet. That's it. Our, the houses, our next door neighbor's house was about 10 feet away on each side. So we had the, the houses are about 10 feet apart. And um, our house was probably, well, we had three bed, we had a three bedroom house with nine people and one bathroom. Um, but we had a basketball court, you know, with a 10 foot rim. And my brother was captain of the basketball team, one of my other older brothers. And all the basketball players would come over all the time. So we would go and, uh, and we'd play basketball every day. We had my dad put spotlights out there. We'd play basketball till ten o'clock at night every day. We played basketball in the snow in Rochester. We'd shovel the backyard and play basketball in the snow. It was crazy. So, um, and I was obsessed. I practiced all the time. I, I have, I have a picture. I'm going to put it on my Instagram of my brother and I. My younger brother, John, playing basketball in the snow, wearing all these snow clothes, but yet shooting baskets in the backyard. But we would have full on teams, you know, 10 people at a 20 by 20 uh, uh, dirt backyard, not one blade of grass. Um, so anyways, but yeah, when I was good in track, I wanted to be the best in that. It was funny then. Then when I started on the guitar, it was like over that summer, I got good enough on the guitar to um, where I was, <laughs> I was as good as anybody that played guitar in my school or better. I was better than everybody that played guitar. So then that kind of made me want to get even better on the guitar. And because my foot wasn't healed and I couldn't... Um, and I couldn't uh, uh, really, I, I wasn't as good. My track skills had declined dramatically. Um, then I started wanting to, to be better and better on the guitar. Um, so that kind of fueled that whole thing. But... Um, then by the time I was, I always ran indoor track. By the time I was a senior, I didn't run indoor track because I was playing gigs all the time. Um, now, during this whole time, I played the bass, right? So I played bass and orchestra. So I was always doing that. I was always doing that. Um, I got an electric bass when I was in eighth grade. and I, and I and, um, But I played the upright bass. I played classical bass. Um so I've been playing guitar since 1976. So how many years is that? 40, uh, 43 years. Um, bass. Um, but 
I was obsessed with sports when I was a kid. Absolutely obsessed. <laughs> um, I any baseball stat, basketball stat, football stat, anything I knew. I played, you know, we'd play football all the time. We played baseball all the time. Um, is that an Izzy soda? It's a, yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah. So my, my whole thing was, was, um, uh, making dunk videos. That would be something that I would do, would have done. That would be, uh, if I was young now, I, you know, I, I kind of, um, I say to Dylan, I was like, come on, Dylan, you gotta be able to jump. You know, Dylan doesn't care about sports at all. Um, but I'm thinking, come on, Dylan, when I was your age, I mean, when I was his age, I played, you know, I played baseball, played in little league and everything. Um, and, uh, what was my favorite baseball team? In the 70s, it was the Oakland A's. Most people from Rochester like the Baltimore Orioles because our, the the AAA team or the, the International League team was the Rochester Red Wings. But I like the, the, um, I like the Oakland A's. That was when Vita Blue was pitching and Raleigh Fingers and Catfish Hunter and, and uh, uh, was Reggie Jackson playing for the A's then? Um, yeah, I liked the A's until I don't. Why would I like the Oakland A's? It was totally weird. I mean, I'm from upstate New York, and I like the Oakland A's. Um. Uh. Then um. But I was I was then I then I became an Orioles fan. Because they won. That's right. That's right, Brett. I became an Orioles fan later on. It's weird that Rochester has our Orioles fans because of the farm team. But, man, I saw Don Baylor play. I saw, I mean, all the famous uh, Orioles came up through um, came up through the Red Wings. I mean, every one of them. Al Bumbry. Um, well, you actually, you wouldn't know Al Bumbry. Um, uh I saw everybody play in Rochester when I'd go see the Red Wings play. Jim Palmer. I mean, the 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 when I started liking the Orioles, they you know they had the year where Jim Palmer, Dave McNally, uh, Pat Dobson, and uh, they had four twenty game winners. It must have been, uh, God, seventy two or something. Um. Quayar, uh, Mike Quayar, is that right? I'm trying to think who the uh, who the four pitchers were. I mean, people used to pitch complete games all the time. It's uh, I mean, I have too many artifacts in my black. Sorry about that. It's uh, it's dark in here. Quayar, Dobson, Palmer, and McNally. Is that right? It's amazing. Four 20-game winners on one team. It was unbelievable. What am I drinking, Nari? I'm drinking an Izzy. Um, so anyway, so that's my that was my sports. Uh, those are my sports obsessions. I was, I was um I was into sports just like music. So, um, growing up, never took music seriously until, um, until, until I, until I started on the guitar. Cause when I played the cello and the bass, I didn't really take it seriously. Do I still watch any sports? No, no, I don't really, um, I mean, if the Falcons were in the Super Bowl, great. I, I mean, I'll go to the, uh, I'll go see. I haven't been to a game. That, uh, I didn't go to a game this year. Last year, I went to. I would I, typically I go to one Falcons game a year or so. Um, 
Uh, I, I, I haven't seen the Braves play in years. I, I just don't, um, I'm just not that interested. Um, but, and I don't, I don't have time. I make too many YouTube videos. Anyways, all right, so that's it. I just came on just to say what's up. And, um, uh, because I haven't been on in a while. And you guys are the best. And I wanted to talk sports. I didn't know what I'm talking. I still, I still am trying to think of this guy Dave, this other Dave, not Dave Butler, but there's another guy named Dave that I, ca I, I was saying if I go on, I'm going to think of his name. He's another kid that played guitar that was older than me. That I've, I've literally been trying to think of his name for about twenty years. Um, okay, 